Okay, this video uh, deals with changing the bearings in the gearbox for my 1995 model Suzuki Vitara V6 2 liter. Um, the reason I am going through all this work is that the gearbox is quite noisy in all gears except for fourth gear and the reason for that is that fourth gear on these gearboxes goes straight through the gearbox so there's no side loading on any bearings. Um, I know from having read on the internet that generally the problem is the input bearing um, on the gearbox and if you look at the gearbox like this, let's get around to the other side um, you have the bell housing on the left hand side you've got the transfer case on the right hand side and the gearbox is actually just this bit in the middle that bit there has got all the, the gearbox stuff in it and the input bearing is on the input shaft which is this one there and you'll see if I if I shake that I'm not sure if that's going to be visible on the video that's got probably about two millimeters of movement in any direction which is which is quite a lot for for a roller bearing you're not supposed to have anything like that um, as it's the reason it's lying here right now is I've just got the old water blaster onto it to try and get most of the of the gunk and, and mud from the last was it 17 years or so off of it? No, it can't be right, 12 years. Anyway, the um, it's not too bad. Um, basically, just stuff some stuff some plastic bags into any any open holes where you don't want the water to go and try and avoid spraying into them. And see, it's still still a little bit dirty, but um, not too bad. So let's quickly uh, jump underneath the car, and I will show you what uh, what had to be taken off. To Okay, that's the beast there. As you can see what I've done is I've driven the back wheels up onto a couple of ramps and then I've used some uh, some axle stands under both sides of the chassis at the front and uh, that's that's worked pretty well. Basically, I'm not sure how far we are off the ground here, probably about 600 millimeters to the to the chassis rails which um, gives enough space really to work in and to get the gearbox out so let's have a look okay so this is sitting underneath the car looking into the the clutch and the things that had to be removed basically to get the gearbox off is we had to remove the drive shaft that goes to the front diff and once that's unscrewed from these four holes it just falls down and pulls out of the gearbox we also had to undo the drive shaft that goes to the to the rear axle there, so same deal. We had to um, remove, there, there are two studs sticking through the um, through the gearbox uh, and with, with nuts on the far end that sit there and there. We also had to of course remove the starter motor which bolts in through there and there. It's a bit dark but you can get some idea. Um, then apart from that there were four bolts holding the uh, gearbox on there's a couple of bolts right up the top up there where my fingers are pointing and we could access them uh, over the top of the gearbox with some long extensions through the through the hole in the in the floor now obviously you also have to remove the two gear sticks the, the shift lever and the transfer case shift lever through there and then essentially it was just a matter of um, also removing the these two sets of electrical wires that go to the gearbox one is for the four-wheel drive light and the other one's for the reverse light and what else was there 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 are some some breather pipes on the gearbox but they just come off with the gearbox so they're no problem then we just used a uh, a transmission jack or just a just a fairly large jack that had a transmission removal tool kind of mounted to it that sat underneath the gearbox um, and then essentially just pulled back and you have to give a little bit of force because the splines for the clutch engage quite deep into the into the center of the clutch there but um, that's pretty much it and then uh, of course the other thing to do is um, the other little trick that we did is to remove the um, the, the, the gearbox mount which runs from there to there we actually slung a strop through the through one of the holes in the top and hung the gearbox from the from the bodywork 
and then removed the the mount so that the gearbox was just just hanging in free space basically and um, yeah that's it Pull, pulled the gearbox out let it down and got it out from underneath the car now while I was underneath the car I forgot to say you also have to remove the whole exhaust system which which came off pretty easily actually it was just uh, just really held on by the four uh, studs that go through the through the uh, manifold going to hit a manifold there and uh, the whole exhaust system came straight off and the other thing that had to be unbolted before the gearbox can come out obviously was the um, the clutch slave cylinder but it'll be fairly obvious once you're looking underneath how to do all that okay so I've taken the bell housing off the front of the gearbox which is uh, pretty straightforward nothing to it and now we've got the transfer case, the adapter case and the gearbox and I suspect that the next step is going to be to um, remove the transfer case from the adapter case so that we can get access to the plate that, uh, that, that blocks off your shift levers here so we can see what's going on in there and so that's my next step, I've just got the gearbox on its side and I've undone these bolts that uh, hold the transfer case and the adapter case together. Okay, so I figured out that on my gearbox, before the transfer case can come off the adapter case, you've got to pop this uh, little cover off uh, from the top, uh, mainly by undoing a big bolt that goes into the side there. Um, and then you can get to this last bolt here that holds the transfer case to the adapter case. Okay, now we have the transfer case removed from the um, gearbox and adapter case. You can see there the shift levers inside and that's what the adapter case basically looks at. You see the seal on the output shaft of the gearbox 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 and that's the input shaft and the clutch pivot point and just for interest sake that's the transfer case and that's basically what the side of the transfer case looks like okay this is the gearbox there split from the adapter case and you can basically see how it all works there. You've got a bearing on the output shaft and a bearing on whatever that shaft is down there. I assume that's the side shaft. And um, they go into those locations there on the adapter case. And uh, when I replace all the bearings, I'll also replace this uh, oil seal here that goes around the output shaft. You can see where it runs there. But um, apart from that, the only, well, the next step basically is I'm going to pull off this. Uh, bearing retainer from the input shaft and uh, then I'll look at what to do to split the two halves of the gearbox that's the uh, input bearing cover removed there and you can see here the amount of movement in that bearing And uh, the next step is going to be to undo these six screws that hold the two halves of the bearing together, uh, the gearbox together. And we'll see how that goes. There are uh, four extra long bolts there, 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 and there that also uh, bolt the top and bottom of the gearbox together. So take those out before you try and split. Okay, here we have the top half of the gearbox case with the three uh, selector forks. The three selector forks obviously run there, there and there. You've got your output shaft, output bearing, well, central bearing for lack of knowing what it's actually called, the input bearing and once again if I move this input shaft you can see the amount of let's try and steady that, you can see the amount of play on the input which is what I understand the noisy one is now I assume it's just going to be a matter now of lifting that top shaft off 
and then um, underneath you're going to find there's a side shaft or another shaft and um, that might need to be might need to be pressed out um, by the look of it but we'll get to that when we get to that okay here we have the main input and output shaft that's been removed from the gearbox housing that's the I think it's called the side shaft that's left down there and you can see by the look of it that the uh, to get this to get this apart I'm gonna have to pull this bearing get this gear off and it looks like the whole thing um, that that big gear on that end is fixed to the shaft so the whole shaft has to come out to the left but we'll leave that for now now the, the way that I'm gonna gonna disassemble this main shaft is step by step and you can see in the background I've cleared up the workbench and I've got some white paper laid out and I'm just going to take one part at a time off and put it in its location on the on the white piece of paper and that will hopefully help me uh, get it all back together now we can see that um, the three bearings that I want to replace is that one there that one there and this one here Plus I will have a look at the needle roller bearings inside the gears when I get them off and might replace those as well depending on the cost. Okay, here we can see the main or the output shaft of the gearbox and there you can see all the uh, bits that came off it in sequence. So I'll just go over them slowly. That there is the output bearing. central bearing uh, that stuff there goes on the short end of the shaft which is that end there and that is the input shaft input bearing and one of the gears with its synchro I'm not sure which gear is which uh, that needle roller fits inside that shaft and goes over the end of that shaft and that's got quite a bit of play in it as well um, although I guess you, you can't tell it like this but when the shafts go together it's got quite a bit of play in it so that should really be replaced together with the input bearing now to pull all the bearings off I got myself a 150mm uh, uh, gear puller but I also needed to fabricate up some uh, some longer arms there as you can see just out of some bits of uh, mild steel angle iron in order to be able to pull it, the, the last bearing off that shaft. Okay, the side shaft wasn't uh, too difficult to take out in the end. Um, had a bearing on that side, it had a central bearing, kind of like a roller bearing there, and a uh, bearing on the opposite side. Only thing to be a little bit careful of is there's like a, um, a scissor gear or something on, on this side that runs next to that gear there and um, it's got a little tiny pin you can see there that fits inside uh, a hole on the shaft there so just make sure you don't lose any of that uh, when you're taking anything apart okay so I've done quite a bit since the uh, last video I made that is actually um, a completely reassembled main shaft now so what I what I actually ended up replacing on this shaft is the main input bearing there, the central bearing there, and the main output bearing there, and also where the input shaft and output shaft slide together, there's a, a little needle roller, and um, I replaced that as well because really it's the needle roller and the input bearing together that control how stable the input shaft is, which is now which has now got very little play in it, so that's that's quite good. Now, something um, that I thought was worth mentioning is I, I haven't put together the the counter shaft yet because the counter shaft actually had on it a little bearing surface that you can kind of see there, and that was quite quite damaged, and that that worked together with a um, with a needle roller kind of bearing like that one there, and it was actually quite difficult to remove this uh, this bearing surface because it's pressed right up against the shaft there and there is there's no space to get a, a bearing puller or anything like that and 
so what I ended up doing is I tried heating it and, and tapping it with a punch and then nothing really worked and in the end I gave up and I grabbed the, uh, the Dremel tool with a, a very thin cutting blade and I just made a cut uh, most of the way through see if I can get a better angle most of the way through that um, didn't touch this shaft and didn't go all the way through but then um, because the bearing surface is quite hard and all I did was I put a screwdriver into the into the uh, the cut twist it oops, see if I can do this on video twist it and the bearing just split and so that'll come off easy as now no problem just a little trick that I forgot to mention before um, the input bearing and the center bearing actually have like a little snap ring and a groove now buying a bearing of a groove is nothing special that's that's they're very common uh, just the thing to watch out for is the snap ring on the bearing is actually different from the one that the bearing comes with so you have to take the snap ring off of the old bearing and put it onto the new one otherwise the bearing doesn't fit into the housing where the snap ring locates Now I've just uh, assembled that main shaft with all new bearings and um, when I assembled it I just used some uh, API GL4 75, 90, whatever the, the recommended gear oil is uh, just just a little bit on everything and also just poured a little bit into the actual roller bearings just so when, when they start up the first time they have just a little bit of oil in them until the oil splashes around but what I was saying is I just um, covered the whole thing in some glad wrap just basically keep all the dust and crap out of it until uh, I'm ready to reassemble <laughs> 